Luke chapter number 8, beginning in verse number 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. I want you to just focus in for just a minute on some women folk. <coughs> on some women folk. You got Mary called Magdalene, Joanna, you got Susanna, and many others. It says certain women. It says many others. There's a whole group of women folk, and they traveled around and they ministered. They ministered to Jesus. They ministered unto him of their substance. I just want to preach on this thought, ministering to Jesus, but I want to focus in on single ladies. They're important. There's widows, ladies that never been married. Some of these may have been married and got divorced because they had devils in them. We don't, we don't know. Bible doesn't give us a whole lot of detail. But I'm telling you, sometimes single ladies feel like they have the least opportunity to serve the Lord. And I'm telling you, in many ways, they have the most opportunity. And we're just going to look, take a brief look at these. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. And Lord, I just pray that you'd help us as we open our eyes and looking at ministering to Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen and amen. Anybody should be able to serve God. Um, I, I'm a recycle. Um, if, if you just... If you could play back every moment of my life and, and highlight the bad stuff, listen, I, I'd be out. Nothing I could do. I can't deny it. I, I just dealt with it. I hate it. I, I confess it before the Lord. Um, I don't talk to you about it because it's none of your business. And, uh, and I've, been, I've been clean. I never did any drugs, and I've never, never been into alcohol, no, nothing like that. But I was a bad person. And... Um, I did bad things with bad people. And I'm not proud of that. I don't want to glorify Satan by getting into that. Sometimes we start talking about our past lives and it becomes like a contest. Whoa, I was way worse than that, brother. Listen, I hope you were way worse than me. What a trophy of God's grace. Because I know where I've been and I know what I've done and I know what God has forgiven me. I got it under the blood and we, man, we trust the Lord and Thank God, statutes and limitations run out on everything. And uh, we were talking about that the other day. We had already started the church. Man, that's scary stuff. I met my wife in 93. I'd been doing bad things in 93. And when we first started the church, I just always imagined, you know, like a SWAT team come in, come get me. Man, everything was in that 10-year window. So, praise God for 10 years going away. Amen. Amen. Hey, I didn't want to be in trouble. I didn't want to. Listen, I, I promised God I'd, I'd do whatever he wanted for the rest of my life. And I've, I've just tried to do that. And I, I didn't know it was everything. I thought like I'd be an usher. I could usher with the best of them. I could do that. I've, done, I've been through all the awkward moments as an usher. Drop stuff, you're climbing on the ground, picking it up, trying to count it, get it back in, you know, and make sure it's all there. I've had people make change in the offering plate. That's an awkward moment. I learned just take things in stride and just keep going. If people are weird, that's okay, I'm weird too. Uh, teaching classes, how weird is that, man? But God's blessed. Not because I have any talent, because I, I really don't have any talent. Y'all watch, when I die and y'all get a real preacher, y'all gonna be like, wow, this is what it's like? <laughs> but it, it's not talent. It, it's surrender. It's just being willing. It's having a willing heart and just show up. A lot of people are like, I want to serve the Lord, and then they don't ever show up. 
I'm going to do this. No, nah, you all talk, no action. You just keep showing up. They'll find something for you to do. Yeah. You'll find something. I was okay with being the security guard. My heart's desire was singing the choir. I was going to, I just figured if I got in the choir, they'd teach me. I, they didn't know, ain't nobody trying to teach. They just want you to sing. That didn't work, so I became a narrator. Narrating everything. Talk about narrating. In between narrations, I got to be an usher. So I'm ushering. Just trying to get stuff done. Listen, man, I just want to be part of what God's doing. I want to be part of what God's doing. And if God can take a loser and give me an amazing wife that can help me do what I need to do, I'm good. I'm good. Man, I, I hope I die first. That's all I'm saying. Because I'd be a mess without my wife. For 25 years now, I'd be a mess without my wife. If I didn't have Angela, please. I'd have had to go Mormon and just get a whole team of wives. What do you call them? Sister wives? <laughs> Baptist doctrine with sister wives. That, that'd be awkward. They'll legalize it in a minute. We ain't got to do that because I got her. But uh, that's a thing, man. She's like a whole... She's like a whole office full of people all by herself. She does stuff, man. I'm not bragging on her just because she's mine. I'm bragging on her because I know the inside story. I've seen her work sick. I'm talking about had major, major, major surgery. And said, hey, swing by the church. I need you to run in and get something. So I swung by. And I was like, what do you need me to get? She goes, oh, you'll never know where it is. Help me out. And I was like, girl, you coming home from the hospital. And then she's like, just, you don't know where it is. Just help me out. Help me out. I'm helping you. I'm about to take you home, put you to bed. You just had surgery. Nope. Got to get up. So she gets out. I, I get her in and she sits at her desk. I go, what are we trying to find? She said, just go away. I got work to do. I was like, what are you talking about? She, she wouldn't go home. She wouldn't go home. She's one of those women that just, she don't quit. We have a church full of women. They just do stuff when you don't expect them to do stuff. Something bad happens to them, and they're back at it before their recovery time is over. Uh, but you know, before their heart is healed, before their body's healed. We have some amazing ladies in our church, and I appreciate that. And not all of them are married. You know, I mean, here's the deal: Angela could do fine without me. I just make everything more fun, okay? And uh, oh, I promise it's more fun. And uh, but there's a lot of. We have a ton of ladies in our church that serve the Lord, and a lot of times they're kind of that unsung hero of the faith. And you go over there and look at Hebrews chapter number 11, and you'll see there's women folk listed up, and they're married and single. Single at the time they, they did what they did. You take Rahab. You know, you know she's, she's my second favoritist woman in, in the Bible. And uh, I like JL. <laughs> That's one killer lady. And, uh, <laughs> and then Rahab, what, what is that in Hebrews 11? It says she perished, with, she perished not with them that believed not. When she, talking about when she was hiding the spies. And then you find her in Matthew chapter 1 in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You're talking about an old prostitute, out of, a, a Gentile prostitute out of a destroyed city. She... She's getting multiple mentions. I pointed out, my wife thinks I'm too hard on Bathsheba, but Bathsheba don't get no mentions in the New Testament. David got his heart right. You see that in, I think it's Psalm 52. David, David gets his heart right with the Lord. And, and even as you're reading through the story, David is weeping and just mourning. And, and I know Bathsheba was mourning. I know she was mourning, and I'm not trying to be hard on her. She lost her baby. I get it. But man, I just would have liked to have seen some fight in her. I would have liked to have seen her. Man, when David called for her, I would have liked to have seen some not so Lord. I'm the wife of thy servant, Uriah the Hittite. and He's one of your mighty men. Let us not sin before the Lord. I'd, I'd like to have seen like Joseph did with Potiphar's wife. And he's like, uh -uh, I'm not going to do this wicked thing and sin against God. Amen. Man, I just wish I'd seen a little more fight out of Bathsheba. That's all. And so I'm, she's probably a real swell lady. I don't know. But all I'm reading about, I'm just not super happy with her situation. I don't get excited about Bathsheba like I do about Rahab. Yeah. Rahab, man, she was trash. She, had, she lived in the dark. She lived in the shadows. Can you imagine 
having her testimony where if you was out at the grocery store, you couldn't be like, hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh uh wasn't nobody supposed to know Rahab. Mike's wife might get the wrong idea. Well, Mike said, hey, how you doing? And couldn't, didn't, couldn't nobody know her. She had to be a nobody living in secret. And yet, because she made a change in her life, you see her through, in, in the New Testament multiple times. In the genealogy of Jesus. She gets married to old Salmon, and they, uh, they have a, a kid. His name is Boaz from the book of Ruth. Talking about her daughter-in-law got a book of the Bible named after her. Hey, that don't happen, honey, but what you choose, God. Her son becomes a literal picture of Christ being Boaz, that kinsman redeemer who takes care of business. Amen. Hey, man, I love ladies. That, that Maybe you got a past, maybe you didn't think you had a future, and then you just change and do something big for God. Look at the women that it says here. Look, look at it again in verse number two. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Man, these are some recycles. These are some recycles. These are folks that's all messed up. That's what I like about the book of Luke. Luke, being a physician, being a man, he said, you know, there's been a bunch of people set forth to just set apart things that we're most, that we, we most certainly know, we, we most certainly believe. He said, but you know, I, I've been knowing it more perfectly since the very beginning. And what I like about Luke is that he gets into Jesus as the God-man, gets into his personal relationships with underdogs underdogs. You read that Christmas story lately? That's got a bunch of shepherds in there. Didn't nobody care about no shepherds? Shepherds, they smelled like the animals they kept. They were weird, man. Everybody else is at the house, you know, loving on their kids, living life, and these guys are out there in the, in the fields taking care of critters and animals and having to kill stuff all the time. That, that's a rough life. These are some rough dudes. These aren't the guys, you know, that you're, hey, man, come be my best man at my wedding. You didn't need them around. They stinky. Talking about some woman that's been some 80 years from her virginity. Got an old man about to die. Just waiting to die until he could see God's Christ. The underdogs. Well, here's Luke talking about them underdogs again. Bunch of women folk that had been possessed by devils had all kinds of weird infirmities, had problems, some ladies that had been down and out, but what are they doing? They're doing exactly what they need to be doing. Look at this. Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Now, I've known some women that had devil in them for sure, I can guarantee, but seven devils? That's big stuff. Chusa, Herod's steward, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward. There's a, there's a married lady right there. And Susanna, don't say nothing about her husband. And many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Listen. It says he had healed them. He had cast out demons from them. He helped them not be sick anymore. Here's some hopeless women, folk. But you know what? Jesus did something for them, and now they're going to do something for him. Hey, friend, I don't care if you, who you are, man, woman, or child, red, brown, yellow, black, or white. You're all precious in his sight. And if he's done something for you, you ought to do something for him. You ought to do something for You ought to find some way to do something for in Jesus' name, something that's not going to benefit you, something that's not going to elevate you, not something that's going to make you look good in somebody's eyes. What do you think about the woman comes in with that alabaster box of spikenard, very precious, breaking that thing, pouring it on his feet, using her hair to scrub his feet clean. Washing his feet with her tears. A woman's hair is her glory. A woman's hair is her glory. That's why they spend so much time working on it. Trying to be more glorious. The Bible said, I didn't say that. God said that. That a woman's hair is her glory. And man, some lady come in 
get her hair all oily and dirty, filthy, matted up with dirty feet, washing his feet with her tears. That's a filthy thing. It offended some of the people in the house. Well, that could have been sold to give it. Hey, why don't you shut up? Why don't you not worry what somebody's doing for Jesus? It ain't none of your business. By the way, if you was doing something for Jesus, you wouldn't have time to be critical of other people, what they're doing for Jesus. You know who ain't critical? Busy people. Ain't got time to be critical. They're rolled up busy serving God also. Here's a lady, a married lady. She's part of that group. I don't know if she had been healed of evil spirits or infirmities or what. But she's one of those. Joanna, Susanna. Man, we don't read a whole lot about these ladies. But the Bible says, Luke records that these ladies ministered up to him, look at this, out of their substance. That will mess up a bunch of Baptists right there. Them ladies had some substance. How are they going to have some substance? No, they need to go home and make a sandwich and iron my shirt. Why they got any substance? Guys, I can, I can give you a list of some preacher's wives, just preacher's wives, and, and wives in general. They got widowed, and their husbands didn't take care of them at all. Amen. That's a sin before God. Amen. That's a sin before God. You say, wait a minute, are you getting in my, I ain't getting none of your business. I'm just telling you that the Bible says that we're supposed to take care of our own family. We're supposed to provide for our own family. Amen. And if we don't, we're worse than an infidel. Now, I'm telling you, if you're a husband, you better figure out how to do for your wife in your absence. There's people driving crazy. There's people with guns. There's blood clots that break loose. There's subdural hematomas. And you could just die. And there's your wife. You're like, oh, yeah, she's a Proverbs 31 woman. She ain't got a skill one. Ain't got a skill one. Oh, no, but we felt spiritual because she, she took care of working at home, working at home, working at home. Okay, hey, that's fine, work at home. But don't tell me that all of a sudden it ain't a big deal for a woman to know how to take care of things. Oh, that's what her husband's for. That's what her husband's for. Look, man, that ain't Bible. You better, hey, before you start bragging on a Proverbs 31 wife, you better go back and read Proverbs 31 again. Hey, that woman was busy working. She was working on textiles. Her family was fed. They wore fancy clothes. They wore nice clothes. Her children rose up and called her blessed. They didn't call up and go, oh, man, mama's a leech. We're going to take care of mama now. Hey, it's right and proper for you to take care of your mama. But listen, it's a whole lot better. Mama could take care of herself too. Having some, having some kind of marketable skill ain't a bad thing. Now, there's a lot of women, folk, and you can't be mad at them. That, that's how their husband designed it. Their husband's designed for them just to have no skills. My wife had skills when I showed up. We got skilled women in our church. We, we have, I mean, we got everything. Artists, uh, folks that, that teach children. We got um, folks that work in offices that, that are doing all kinds of stuff, everything from clerk all the way up to somebody's personal assistant, and, and they're working on you. go, I, they ought not be nobody's personal assistant until you just, nye, 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 nye. well then, hey, husband, you make enough money to take care of them now and make sure you've got enough insurance to take them when you take a dirt nap. All of a sudden, you're going to be circling the drain and then trying to figure out what to do for your wife. It's too late. These women, hey, Luke is bragging on these women just mentioning as we go along the way that they were ministering to Jesus and they were doing it out of their substance. Now I get kind of nervous. That Proverbs 31 that says uh, that, that he trusteth in his wife. Yep. Yeah. I trusted in my wife, but I, I'll be honest. Just honest for just a minute. If I came home and my wife was telling me about some real estate that she bought, she considered it and bought it and didn't talk to me about it. We're going to have an interesting date night. 
Not because I think my wife is dumb, because the opposite's true. But we, we as, as outgoing as, as a lot of our women folk here, I don't know many of our women folk who would just go out and buy some property and not even talk to their husband about it. Uh, we're one flesh. So my flesh better sign too. Out buying, buying some real estate. That, that's what she did in the Bible. I, I didn't write it, y'all. I just read it. It's making some of y'all nervous. Don't get nervous. It's okay. I'm not nervous. Don't be nervous. It's just the Word of God. Okay? We're going to be all right. They ministered to Jesus out of their substance. Apparently single women and at least one married woman and many others. Their substance, I mean, it was their stuff. It was theirs to do with what they wanted to. And they wanted to use it on Jesus. Whether anybody liked it or not. Oh, they could have been used to feed the poor. The poor people are still going to be hungry in a minute. Do for Jesus. Man. That's not making light of the poor people. That's just making much about Jesus. We need to make much about Jesus. I, I love how talented some of our ladies are. Now, I, as I just look around, look around the room, you're talking about caterers, artists, uh, people, people just work hard, just hard working ladies, super smart ladies, FBI lady. Don't be grumpy though. Just don't be grumpy. FBI will make you grumpy. You know, we have people that know how to do it. Nurses. We got folks that, uh, artists ma making wreaths, making other things. I mean, we have people making everything. Why? Just taking care of business. Why? So we have something to offer the Lord. You can't give nothing if you ain't got nothing. David, what did he say? When he went to the threshing floor of Arana, hey, he said, I'll give you. I'll give you all the implements. I'll give you the, the cattle. I'll give you that. I said, no, nah, I'll buy it. He said, no, no, please. You ain't no king and you ain't fitting to give me nothing. I, and he basically, I'm, I'm not reading it and I can't quote it, but I'll just say this. He basically said, I'm not going to try to worship the Lord with something that doth cost me nothing. Amen. Hey, worship ain't free. You're going to have to get over yourself. There's some people couldn't raise a holy hand. They'd be afraid it fell off. And you go, I don't want somebody to think I'm Baptist. I mean, I'm Pentecostal. No, how about they just think you're saved? Amen. It's okay. Listen, I know women are to be silent in church, and I believe with all my heart that that means teaching and usurping authority over men. I, I, I get that. I don't think that at all means I 100% agree with that Bible verse that you just read. Amen. That ain't usurping authority. That's glorifying the Lord. Amen. When it said, hey, when you're back over there in Nehemiah, and they said, they, they built the pulpit, and he was higher than the people because he was above the people, and they stood. I know y'all need padded seats. I'm the only one that stands all the time. It's okay. Don't feel bad for me. That's yeah, fine. I like it that you're comfortable. They stood from mid-morning until the afternoon. They stood hours at a time listening to the reading and preaching of God's Word, and the people, that implied, didn't say the men, they could have said men, it didn't tell said, amen, amen. See, I think women ought to, hey, worship the Lord. Amen. amen. Look what they did. They ministered to him, look, with their substance. Just gave what they had. If some had more, they could do more. Some had a little bit, they just did a little bit. You don't have an alabaster box that's probably worth the whole year's worth of salary? Use your tears. That, that's wild. That's just what they did. There's women folk doing wild things in the Bible for the Lord. Can you imagine? I, I know this was a lady that, that is a descendant. You, some of you, our ladies are descendants of that lady that was up in the top of that tower. And the bad guys came and she said, mm -mm, threw a rock down and killed them. I guarantee that's some of our folks. Here comes Sisera showing up at JL's house. And he said, whoo, mercy, that's a long run. Give me something to drink. He said, I need some cool water. She said, how about some warm milk? <laughs> Gave him some warm milk. 
bless your heart. There's probably cookies involved, you know, but there's so much room for scripture. And, and then all of a sudden, man, he just laid down there and took him a nap. And she's over there like, mm-hmm. goes over and grabs a tent spike, takes off her house shoe. Can't ever, don't know where the hammer is. I'm just kidding. It says she took, took a hammer. <laughs> don't get mad. I was just trying to color a good picture. And there he is sleeping. Delicate, ladylike, beautiful lady, cosmopolitan in every way. And she takes a tent spike and drills it through his temples and nails him to the floor. How awesome is that? Can you just see, can you just see some tired guy and all of a sudden he's just like flipping like a fish? You know he was. You ain't dying instantly on that thing. Sitting there flopping around like a fish on the ground. Her husband comes up. She's outside with the hand sanitizer talking about, yeah. It's like, baby, your hands are so nice. I've been soaking in it. Yeah, you know, palm olive. Said, We've been chasing this guy, Sisera. Really? You don't say. Yeah, Sisera, he's a bad guy. Really? You ain't seen him come by here, have you? Oh, he didn't come by here. Is he about this tall? Is he, is he wearing this kind of clothes? Honey, where is he? He's dangerous. He ain't so dangerous anymore. He's inside. He walks in there, and I guarantee you, JL's husband, he probably, if they ever had an argument before they went to bed, you know he was trying to get it right. You know he was sleeping one eye open. They're like, Turn the radio off. You turn the radio off. Turn the radio off. They hadn't invented remote controls yet. You get up. Finally said, fine. <laughs> You're like, no, no, I'll get it. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. Every time she goes to get up, she says, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> Did I tell you how much I love you? <laughs> Just killed him, man. Rahab hiding spies. I mean, listen, there's... She could have been the, the heroine of her entire town. They would, have, they would have loved her in Jericho for a few days. Yeah. See, when, when ladies are doing something for the Lord, so something real special happens. There's a lot of guys who get nervous when you start talking about such things, but it's throughout the Bible. Women are kind of the underdogs. The Middle East hasn't changed a whole lot in the last 2,000 years. And so women weren't super high thought of. And they couldn't just do everything. I mean, they, they weren't allowed to drive cars even back then. And, uh, and so it was, it was just hard. But you know, they, it was more than just their substance. They were ministering to him. Also got their service. I mean, listen. If you want to give to the work of the Lord, any, any ministry has to be staffed and financed. That's what it is. You're like, preacher, can we have this kind of ministry? Sure. We just have to staff it and finance it. We could have a Spanish church right now. Right now, today, we could have a Spanish church if it was staffed and financed. And we need it. Because I could... Hobble, hobble a little bit, but it's not enough for preaching. We need, we need a Spanish ministry, but it needs to be financed, and it's got to be staffed with the right people. We've stutter-stepped three times trying to get it going. Wrong guys. They, they want, a lot of guys are just lazy, and they don't want to go knock doors. They want, want you to get 35 members right there and a big salary and a house to live in and all that. And I'm like, dude, go get a job. That's what the rest of us do. Ain't no shame in that. Amen. It has to be staffed. And it has to be financed. These ladies were given of their substance. They were ministering to Jesus. They were given of their service. You see Aquila and Priscilla. It says they. Teaching folk. Teaching a man. <gasps> what? There's a lot of ladies that are smarter than guys. Guys just don't like to admit it. It doesn't have to stay that way. 
You can glean what needs to be gleaned. Hey, they gave of their substance. They gave of their uh, service. And ultimately what they were giving is of themselves. They gave their self. Hey, lady, you want to do something for God? Why don't you get you some substance and give God of your substance? Why don't you figure out how to give God your service? It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. And the way to do that is just give God yourself. Don't look at your... So there's a lot of ladies that, you know, they're like, well, I'm married. My husband takes care of... Yeah, okay. We've got a lot of married folks that still serve the Lord. There's ladies that, that are given of their substance. We have single ladies that do more than some growing... Here's what I don't like. I don't like men complaining that ladies do something in the church when they ain't doing nothing themselves. We, we could... I mean, it'd be a whole different world if we had... You know, 85 guys, 120 guys just working super hard, serving the Lord. Our church, we have good men that are serving the Lord. And we have good ladies that are serving the Lord. There are churches, though, that people criticize. Like, look at that. Those women are running that church and running that church. Well, where are the men? Don't blame the women folk because the men folk are sorry. Somebody's got to do something. Hey, did you see that in verse 1? At the end, and the twelve were with him. His disciples were with him. But something was lacking because these women had to step in with their substance, with their time, with their effort. Are you seeing that? I'm not writing it, I'm reading it. Our job as preachers is to read the Word of God distinctly and give the sense. Given the sense doesn't mean skipping over the parts that make you feel funny. The 12 disciples were there. And yet there was something lacking. So these ladies jumped in. Talking about folks that just a while back had devils in them. I like it when Jesus goes over to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house. He loved them. He wanted to spend time with them. Now, does your house need to be clean if Jesus has come over? Sure. Your house needs to be clean if ain't nobody coming over. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's not in the Bible, but it's a good idea just to have your house clean. Don't live like a stinking slob. What if somebody has to come in your house? That's a bad testimony. So have a clean house. That's important. If Jesus is coming and he's going to be there at supper time, hey, you're going to serve your best. You're going to go take the paper plates off the table and go get the, the, the corral. <laughs> Set that out. I keep wondering if anybody... We have some of that leaded glass, like artisan antique leaded glass. We have a whole, pan, a whole lit up glass thing, hutch, with all that stuff in there. Hundreds of pieces, literally. And we ain't touched that stuff ever. I'm like, do we not know fancy enough people? We need to invite somebody over so we can dirty up these dishes. But that's what you'd be doing. I, I just imagine Martha's in there. She's like, we ain't had nobody over this important. And she's in there rubbing out the leaded glass and dusting it off and drying it off. And Mary's in there sitting at his feet. Yeah. And then she's like, Jesus! Can you tell my sister to come and help me? She ain't doing nothing. No, no. Be careful. She was doing more than nothing. Jesus said what she was doing was the most important thing. Yeah. Hey, she knew when to stop working. And of course, she might have been lazy and never worked. But at this moment, she's sitting at Jesus' feet paying attention. Listen, the last that we, you know, you, we got to be careful that we're not busy. He, he told Martha, Martha, Martha. Sweetheart, you are so upset with so many things. You're all cumbered about with all this work and doing all this stuff. Mary, she's, she's doing the most important thing. It's time for fellowship with Christ. It's Hey, when that moment comes, that's why we got to stop. That's why I don't like people playing on their phones. That's why we don't like people uh, discussing. That. You got something to discuss? Discuss it before or after church. Let the Lord speak to you through His Word. Amen. 
You say, well, I, I got an important call. Who's more important than God talking to you? Now, I know things come up, but hey, it seems like a lot of stuff comes up with the same people all the time. Remember that, ver remember that verse this morning for verse 18? Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Don't, don't hear out of just hurry up and get done so we can go. Listen, these women, they gave her their substance. They, they were in service. They were giving Jesus themselves. Guys, that's hard to do. But if we're going to serve God, man, woman, or child, it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us fighting our flesh. Man, my flesh wants to do everything but stand up and preach to you guys. My flesh is scared to death to speak in front of people. My flesh wants to sit down right now and take a nap. My flesh is doing intermittent fasting and I'd really like to eat something. We were busy out there talking. I didn't get to get a big dessert or nothing, or seconds. You gotta battle your flesh. Because it ain't eating time, it's preaching time. It's not laying in bed time, it's get up and do what you're supposed to do time. It's not be greedy time, it's serve the Lord time. It's not withhold part. Uh, why would you go off and give your best? This is where women who, who are working in the world have trouble. They go out and give their absolute best and they work like dogs for somebody else. And then they come home and their family gets a little bit of leftover. Yeah. Hey, that's not right. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Do you, you're not going to glorify God by neglecting your family. Right. Hey, lady, you're not going to glorify God by neglecting your family any more than your husband is going to glorify God by neglecting his family. Yeah. It's just not going to work. We need to make sure that we're doing it. Take your Bible over to 2 Corinthians and we're done. The Apostle Paul, he kind of described the spirit that these ladies, I believe, had. As you look at these ladies, 2 Corinthians 12, look at this. Second Corinthians 12. I love this. Look at verse number 15. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. The church that he had to, through a letter, spank. He spanked them. And now he's loving on them. And as he finishes this loving on them letter, in verse number 15 of chapter 12, he says, And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Man. You know, Jesus Christ died for the church. And Jesus loved the church. It's his church. It's not a building. It's us. It's, it's his saved people right here. Listen. Paul said, I will very gladly. He said, I'll reluctantly. He said, very gladly. I will spend, give him my substance. And be spent. Give of his service and his self. I'll very gladly spend and be spent for you. Even though, even though it's going to mean that I'm going to be loved less in the world. By the way, the more you do for Christ, the more this world ain't going to have any use for you. Now, if you want to be worldly and you think that's important, don't worry. The world, oh, the world will use you up, honey. If you want to be used by the world, sign up. They'll take it all. And then set you out like a bag of trash when you don't have it. They'll leave you in the hog pen eating corn husk as soon as they're done Jesus he'll take what we give and then he'll take us home to a place that he's prepared for us where he's sitting at the right hand of the father I don't know about you but I'll take Jesus over the world every day of the week and twice on Sunday this world is not my home I'm just a passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue and these ladies got it. And all of us would do well to get it. Make sure it's obvious who you're serving. If Jesus has done anything for you, 
we ought to be trying to find everything we can to do for him. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity just to fellowship around your word. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help us to be busy about your work, not just busy for no reason, but glorifying you. We don't want to become a Martha. Lord, we want to please you. We want to glorify you. But we need that sweet fellowship with you. Help us, Lord, to minister to you out of our substance, given our service and our self. Having that heart like Paul who said, I will very gladly spend and be spent. It's worth it. There's rewards in heaven for it. Help us, Lord, to catch it. In Jesus' name.